Hello everyone, this is your host Emma Emerson with Golden Icons and we are here with Jim Ike. Can you hold please? We're running late for crying out loud. I want you to meet my fiance, Princess, Princess Mary, my ex girlfriend. Mary. Mary! 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 Princess, look after me. Risk is about when you go out there, gun blazing, everything you have, you put it on the table. And when you win, you win all. You lose, you lose all. It takes balls. And mine is sagging always. <laughs> You know, the, the first time I had an interview with you, that was in 2010. And that was the beginning of this journey that I've gone on with Golden Icons. And amazingly enough, you were the host for the first Guillaume Awards. I just want to say that interview was the interview that made me say I love this job. You want to know why? Because you're always so real and you always give us what we're looking for. You always got the juice. So a lot of things has happened for you and for us and we're going to talk about you today. But first let's go into Guillermo. Based on what you said when you got on the red carpets, your exact words were Based on what you see, if we continue this for the next three years. It's going to be the single most important filmmaker's event of the diaspora in the shortest possible time. It's the making of history, to say the least. When you made that statement, that was about, what, two years ago? We're in our third year now. And this is becoming bigger than what we expected. So the question now to you is, why did you take that risk? Well, the question is, is what I predict happened or not. Pretty accurate. No, it's not that <laughs> it's about aligning yourself with vision yeah. and the custodian of that vision. I mean, I've known Bodhi a long time. Yeah. And this is a brother when he sets his mind to do something. I mean, he pushes the envelope every time. Mm -hmm. um, for a maiden um, event, so much went into preparation so much went into paying attention to details. Mm. When you go that far and you, you sacrifice that much the first time, you can only get better after that. Mm. You understand? Yeah. It's progressive. Jim. Yes, ma'am. Those shorts. Mm. People made fun of you mm. on those shorts. Mm -hmm. Can you not believe two years later mm -hmm. you see it on the Hollywood record mm -hmm. with Pharrell and Co. Those are those risks that I, you take. I, I think I think everything I do, if it's if if my blood is not pumping, if the adrenaline is not is not pushing me, if my testosterone is not going riot, <laughs> I will not do it. I remember what happened. I called David, um, the guy that Put it together. I called him to come to Ghana. Mm -hmm. I told him I was going to do this award and I had something to wear. I didn't tell him it was short. I designed it, I gave it to him. I told him, go make the jacket first. I'll tell you what I wear down when I'm ready. And so when I came into Lagos, the jacket was ready. So it was like, okay, I have ideas about the pants. I think the pants should be <laughs> slim fit. Should be. I allowed him to talk. When it was done, I told him, listen, I'm wearing shorts. I'm going to wear shorts. He said, Jim, I don't want to have flared over my name. I said, no problem. <laughs> but he said, okay, how in the world are we going to do a double-breasted jacket, a shirt with shorts? I said, I've seen it in my mind's eye. I think it's what I want to do. 
like everything else I do, fashion is one of them. If I don't push the bar, if I don't set the precedence, I will not get involved. I know everybody's going to come out there with tuxedos, come out there in their Versace. I wanted an untamed, uh, an untamed man, um, I don't know, design that was just completely peculiar with me. And he said he wanted to be completely disassociated from it. I said, fine. So we designed it. I remember the morning the hotel was void. And I said, I, I was heading out. He, he was staying, he lagged behind. Even my bodyguard didn't want to come out with me. It was that bad. <laughs> so I came out, yeah, it was highly and widely criticized. They said yeah. all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. I didn't say anything. A year later, no, the next year, that's this year. Yeah. Pharrell wore exactly the same exactly. thing to the Grammys. Mm -hmm. Kanye wore this exactly the same thing to a listening party or some sort of party. And then he made Ebony. And here we are. They were, what they wrote was what to wear this year. But they forgot to say I wore it last year. Yeah. I think that made all the point. So you, you, you take these risks. Yes, I like risks. And that's, that's one thing I appreciate about you. But sometimes your risks are like, uh. Yeah, but what is the fun? And what, what, when you sit down and you calculate the variables of life and you say, okay, this I'll do and this I will not do, that is not risk. You've, 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 you're not defining risk. Mm -hmm. Risk is about when you go out there, gun blazing, everything you have, you put it on the table. Yeah. And when you win, you win all. You lose, you lose all. It takes balls. And mine is sagging always. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the Guillaume Awards that, yeah. that year. Yeah. Ah, controversy and you just, mm -hmm. do you notice it goes hand in hand. Somehow, somehow you always, seems that you always do something that is out of the ordinary. And let me remind you of an event. Right after, there was an after party. And somehow, somehow, I There's a know, little drama outside. A little drama outside. But then again, um, you must also understand that the industry is synonymous with controversy. It just so happens that the press needs something that we make their, their imaginations all the time. I think somehow they find it in me. You know, I, 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 I mean, it's, it's frustrating, but that's what it is. It's become some sort of a tradition, you know. Do you plan this? Or I never planned it. You were there, I didn't plan anything. I came out to Maybe. party like everybody else. I went outside, there was drama, dusted it off my shoulders and kept it moving and everybody made a big deal of it. The next I, day. I had a reality <laughs> show thing too and um, they were filming it live so I mean it's, it's just what it is. I just, I hate boredom. I'll tell you something, the one singular fear I have after failure is boredom. I don't want anything, whether I'm quiet, whether I'm immobile, whether I'm mobile, it does not matter. The elements around me cannot in any way suggest boredom. It's unacceptable. So this excitement that you build for yourself, you don't feel like it has some form of a negative effect even it does, on your It own. does have, yeah, you no, know, no doubt. How do you deal with that? So how do you understand it? Negativity is related. That is how I see it. If you're living life and you're living it honestly and to the fullest, and the person next to you because he wants to play judge and jury does not approve, then that is where you think is negative. So what is negative in what I do? I'm honest, I'm in your face, from your perception. Everything in life is about perception, everything. What you deem offensive is what another person deems as living life, as something that is not offensive, as, as somebody you know, portraying a great deal of honesty. So here I am, for instance, I've been in places where I walked into a restaurant and I basically absorbed all the emotions there within a second. I've come to hone my instincts amazingly well. So I feel the hatred. Free. Basically, yeah, basically on, on I mean, it's, it's, it's on, uh, unsolicited and I feel, I feel, the love, I feel the anger, I feel the curiosity, I feel everything. And then I sit down and maybe a young lady sitting over there decides to come over for an autograph or a picture or for whatever auteur 
reasons they have and they come over and they, maybe the gentleman she comes with starts um, getting a little frisky and decides to take it out on me. That is not my fault. Really. It's not. Uh, go to the restaurant. Well, so what am I going to do? You yeah, know, and, okay, I absolutely <laughs> agree with you. Well, there's a need to go out as well. Yeah, and, then, and then um, it, a lot of things happen that, trust me, it's not my fault by any means. I, they, Do you have a social life at all? Here? And that is why I, my social life is a little redundant right now. I, I don't go out anymore. Really, I, I, and please don't, don't, don't get this wrong. Don't take it the wrong way. This is not as um, a result of, um, you know, trying to live a certain, um, um, do I say, um, hermit life yeah. because I'm afraid of um, what happens whenever I go out. No, it's a personal decision. I sat down once and I told myself that, what do I enjoy really extraordinarily? What gives me joy? Solitude gives me joy. A lot of people in this world are afraid of being alone. I'm not. I like being alone. I really enjoy when everywhere's quiet, when, when I'm reading my book. I love books and I, I read a wide array of subjects. It does not matter what it is. I, I keep a well-maintained archive, mental archives and everything. You give me a medical journal, a novel, a romance novel. I read everything. As long as I'm reading and I'm absorbing something new or stretching on an idea or something, it's already there. I love it. So I'm watching a movie I'm reading and, and, and I've, I've been known to stay indoors four or five days without stepping out to see the sun. Yeah. Jim, do you realize that you are giving us two different views? That's the contradiction right there. That is what that is what makes it hard to accept. The fact that you are here yeah. and you think, okay, this is this guy has to be a party freak. He has to be the party animal. <laughs> the person is uncontrollable, always erratic, untamed. you know, untamed in every <laughs> respect of the word. Yeah. And you come into my world and you find out that I'm the guy that's reluctant to go out. I'm the one my friends are always pushing. Listen, we hate the fact that we can't get you to leave your house and come out. If I have no business out, I'm not going to go out. As I speak to you, I just acquired land in a very remote part of this continent. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Really? In Africa, <laughs> you know. And I'm going to build my house there. I'm going to put up another house there. Trust me, you have to really love me to come visit me. All right, you guys. So we're going to get a chance to talk some more with Jemai. You guys stay tuned right here on Golden Night Comes. So how do you think you're a lot to handle in a relationship? Because this has got to be no, no, difficult for a girlfriend. Let me tell you, this was a date and you told me all this. I will run. For the door because i'm like oh gee that's why i can't be with a coward <laughs> call me a coward, call me a coward. coming this fall live from houston texas the Guillermo awards featuring your favorite stars from around the world it's Epic. Hey! Good evening, Houston! The one event you can't afford to miss comes this fall. Exciting. Entertaining. The Guillermo Awards. For more information, visit www.guillamoawards.com.